You might be wondering what can be so difficult about cropping images. And in a way you are right, it is a fairly straightforward process. You keep the useful bits of an image and you scrap the rest. But don't forget that your crop is crucial to define your composition, so it is worth learning a bit about some of the techniques and theories about the art of cropping. Alright, so cropping, what can be that difficult about it, right? It sounds like a simple thing to do, but believe me, there's a couple of useful techniques that's worth talking about. So in this video, I try to give you five pro tips about using the crop tool. Now, the first one would be how to crop properly or find the right aspect ratio and composition for portraits. So we have an image here that I'm going to crop to a smaller size and first of all I'm going to set the overlay to rule of thirds. So once it's set up to that I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key together with the Shift key so I keep the original aspect ratio of the image or the frame and I'm going to move this up to somewhere around here. Now notice what I'm doing is that I'm keeping the eye level close to the top third. So the bottom third is not as important but that's also aligned to the chin in this case but what's more important is that the top third is aligned to the eyes. Now notice what happens if I move it all the way in the center we get more space on the top but this is actually not as effective as having the eyes lined up here. So we can obviously make this smaller and create a tighter crop something like that and when I press enter we can see how it looks. So this is actually something that you should remember when you're creating a close crop onto people's faces but it gets a little bit more complicated when it comes to cropping like a full body shot of someone. Now I call this the no crop zones but there's actually a couple of important lines that you should avoid when you are cropping people. We had a short video about this in the 365 days of creativity but I thought I'm going to include it in this video because it is a fairly simple concept and once you see it it's easy to remember it. So the lines that you shouldn't crop to are basically the joints in the body. So you shouldn't crop around here, you shouldn't crop around here and then just same thing continuing on the waist, around the elbow, you should also avoid cropping around the breasts and then we already talked about trying not to crop too close maybe to around the chin but Around the face it's a little bit more trickier so I'm going to avoid adding additional guides in here and what I'm going to do is to use this shape that I created just so I can demonstrate to you how it feels. I'm holding down again Alt and Shift together so I keep the same original aspect ratio and I'm going to crop onto these lines just so you can see what not to do. So when I increase the size you can see how it feels. I can also make it narrower just so you can see it better. So imagine a crop like that. It just feels uncomfortable, right? If I come up here again, it doesn't really feel good. And immediately, if I drag this further down, that feels much better. So anywhere between the knees and the ankles is fine to do the crop. So as long as you avoid those points. And the same concept goes for the rest of the body. So again here it feels fine to do the crop but as soon as I come here it feels strange once again. And if I go further up again this is not a nice crop just like this also feels a bit awkward. So try to avoid these lines the ones that I called no crop zones and as long as you keep this in mind you will be able to do good crops on people. And while we are on this example let me tell you about another interesting thing it's called facism ratio which means that if you are showing more of someone's body you are emphasizing the physical attributes and that's a low facism ratio because the face becomes a small detail and we are seeing the whole body so it's a low ratio meaning we are focusing on the physical attributes while if we are cropping much closer to the face we are getting a higher ratio the face itself would be one in this ratio or in this theory so if I get something like this crop 
that is a much higher fascism ratio and this is good if I want to emphasize or focus on the personality because when we look at someone's face we are looking at mainly the eyes and that really tells us a lot about the person what kind of person they are so higher focus on personality with a high fascism ratio and higher focus on the physical attributes when we have a low fascism ratio. And this is used in advertisement and that there is a psychology to this. So again, it's worth keeping that in mind, whether you want to have a tighter crop on a person's face or whether you want to show the full body and then you can really focus on the physical attributes and posture and so on and so forth. But let's move on from people to landscapes and I have a good example here where I'm going to show you why rule of thirds and the golden ratio is used so often for composing photographs. So we have obviously an interesting detail here that is the camel but at the moment it's just floating around in the image, the frame itself. There's no real planning how this image was cropped but as soon as we use the crop tool and we click on the image, by the way you can press C on the keyboard to get to the tool and once you click on it it, the default overlay should be the rule of thirds but when you press O on the keyboard you can toggle through the different overlays that's the grid that we can see here and there's a couple of ones that I don't really use often until we get to this one which is the golden ratio now the golden ratio is useful just like the golden spiral and the rule of thirds. These are all very useful for creating good compositions. So let's just say I'm with the golden spiral. And by the way, if it's not in the right position, you can always use shift O on the keyboard to toggle through all the different spiral positions. But in this case, I'm going to use this one, which spirals to the bottom left. And I'm going to hold down the shift key or in this case I might not even need to hold down the shift key but you can see that I can create a really interesting composition by using the spiral. If I just align the camel to where the spiral leads and then I press enter to accept the crop we can see how it looks and now let's compare it to before so this is what we've seen before and this is after. So by using this placement we created more tension so we have a lot more going on on the right side of the image but we have our point of interest placed there on the bottom left and it's actually a good position for it because the camel is looking towards the right so it opens up the space in the right direction. So you wouldn't want to do this crop in the other direction so let me just place this crop here and I'm going to use shift O so we have the spiral on the other side so let's just say if we create a crop something like that that's going to feel weird because the camel is looking to the right and there's not much going on behind the camel of course again this is not a bad crop because it can create another interesting tension in the image that we feel like we are actually not seeing where the action is leading in the photograph. So when used intentionally you can always go against the rules in a way and rules are only there to break them so you can even create a crop which is obviously silly but we can do something like this, right? where we completely ignore what we are doing with the crop tool where we create this strange and weird crop. Of course I'm going to go back to the way the golden spiral worked and I think that does a really good job but a more subtle version for this would be if we use the rule of thirds just like with the portrait if I switch back to rule of thirds and I use shift key just to keep the same aspect ratio you can see that is a bit more subtle compared to the golden ratio or golden spiral. So here we have the point of interest or focal point closer to the center of the frame but still not placed in the center and that's the most important thing to avoid doing unless you have a very symmetrical image you can have the focal point in the center otherwise you would want to avoid having it there. So just as an example if I create a crop like this this is obviously not going to show enough sky either more similar to how this photo was originally this it doesn't look that bad but it's too static so that's not enough interest in it compared to when we crop it to something like that. Before we continue I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. 
For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe Certified Online Training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now, let's head back to the tutorial. And last but not least, let me show you a few techniques on this photo that I took. Uh, this is actually a miniature town. They are roughly around waist height, these roofs. It's really cool. There's a few of these in England and uh, it looks great and it's really fun to visit. So I'm going to use the crop tool. I have it already on the image, but then I'm going to hold down the command or control key and that will bring up the straighten tool. So with that, I can click and drag on this image and find either a horizontal line or vertical line which will help me to straighten it or of course you can also just rotate the images and use the grid while watching how it looks and then align it like that but I'm going to go back and show you the straighten tool so what I would normally do is to either align this straighten line to a vertical part in the image or if I feel confident I can also set up a horizontal line. For now I'm going to use this line here as the point of reference and notice how Photoshop automatically crops into the image so it rotates it around but crops into the image and that is because I am not using the content aware feature. So if I press escape and I turn content aware option on now if I do the same thing so command or control click and drag to align that line. Notice now it included some of those empty details. Now if I do it again, maybe even more on an angle, we will have even more empty spaces here in all of the four corners. Now if I press enter to accept this, not only the image will be turned or rotated and cropped, but it will also automatically fill in those gaps with the content aware fill feature. So now we can see that even though it was cropped and some empty details would be revealed normally, in this case it was filled in automatically and it did a brilliant job. You can't even tell where the details were filled in. So that was before and this is after. I'm not 100% convinced that this is perfect in terms of straightening. We might need to use additional features like perspective warp as well to get rid of the distortion of this panoramic shot, but I think it's better than it was before. And last but not least, it's also worth mentioning that the delete crop pixels is something I almost always keep turned off because if it's turned on, that means anytime you crop an image, all the excess details that were cropped will be completely lost. So in this case, for example, if I just remove content aware and keep delete crop pixels on, I am going to crop, let's say, image down to something like this. Once I do that, notice here in the thumbnail, everything is already lost. So that means when I go back next time and try cropping, it won't reveal the original details. So in a way, having the delete crop pixels turned off, it means that you are doing it non-destructively. So that's all I wanted to discuss in this video, but I'm sure there's a lot of other useful tips that we could talk about when it comes to cropping. And if you have anything else to share and you want others to know about, please leave a comment below. And also don't forget to like this video if you found it useful. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.